So if you're looking at the raw material stage, uh, let's just talk a little more about that. But I know Julianne and I have talked about that in multiple podcasts. And oftentimes we see it with a lot of products that, that the, the life cycle impacts in that stage typically can be very large, right? So if a company were to make some changes to the product, what would be an example of things that Green Circle would be looking at to verify or understand what those changes were? You know, what steps would the company be doing to, to um, make changes in the raw materials? Right. So in the raw material stage, we would be looking directly at the product's design. We would want to make sure that it's still uh, the same product providing the same functionality. But then we are looking for improvements that they made in the raw materials to either reduce the amount of raw materials through dematerialization or to use a different raw material with a lower carbon footprint. So they could switch to, for instance, a recycled content raw material rather than a virgin raw material, and that would directly reduce the carbon footprint of the product. Then how would the company measure that? They would, what, what, how would they show what the carbon footprint was of the original to the new, the new raw material change? There's different databases or something? Yeah, so you did mention it would be like a partial life cycle um, assessment. So we would be looking for the data set, which then takes the type of raw material and puts an emissions value on that. Um, there are various data sets that, that companies can use. We would be looking for documentation, assumptions, you know, the methodology that the company is using to show us what um, carbon emissions value they are attributing to the raw material. Yeah, that's great. So this is another thing that we've talked about in our previous podcast. So this would be things like when companies are doing life cycle assessment, there are databases like EcoInvent and US Life Cycle Inventory, uh, as well as some of the softwares have their own databases. If, if someone would have an LCA software like Gabby or you know, sometimes Simapro has special databases and those all would be giving information about a product carbon footprint. And, and just so everybody understands that, that means basically if um, you are using, say, a kilogram of a plastic in your product and you look at it and it's a virgin plastic, it's going to have a certain carbon footprint for that. But if you were able to use less of it, then you, obviously that carbon footprint goes down. Or if you're selecting a recycled content, like your example, those recycled content materials will typically have a lower carbon footprint. And if they're embedded into the product in lieu of say all virgin materials, then you're going to get that reduction. So then you look at those databases to actually get, get that information to understand what that reduction was. So definitely measurable, very, you know, based on science and that kind of thing, it sounds like. So it's, it's great. 